For the past five years, I've worked at the National Center for Telehealth and Technology, and I have had the great opportunity to provide, to develop websites and mobile apps for military children and their families. For most of that time, I've led the development of the Military Kids Connect program, which at its core is a website that create, has interactive activities that help military children reduce their stress, learn more about um, living with a parent with a psychological or physical injury, and even having fun with games. The, uh, what I'm going to talk about today is from a psychologist and engineering perspective on how we can create a community and connect military children with each other so they can learn from each other and support each other in the circumstance that they face. So the key to that is to listen and observe. So if I listen as a psychologist, I'm very aware of the difficulties that they face, the strengths that they have, the need for com community and connection, and what their day-to-day -day lives are in the military culture. If I listen from the perspective of an engineer, I'm really interested in how they're using their smartphones, when they're texting, when they're looking at Instagram, what online games they're playing, and so on. But when I look at it from my two perspectives, I realize that I can take my clinical knowledge and translate that into requirements so that we can build websites and mobile apps and online games and virtual reality treatments. So if I think about community, I think about connection. And as a psychologist, connection to me is about relationships. And it's really, really important to me that military children have healthy and positive relationships and that they can be role models for each other. It's something for a, uh, to have a video, a personal story video of a military child talking about living through a parental deployment and how they've coped with that. It would be very different if a civilian child was talking about how they coped during a separation. As an engineer, I know that technology is used all over the place, but it's used to communicate. In my history, I've uh, worked to one small part to create these really high-speed connections we enjoy today, whether they're, you know, to download videos, pictures, and so on. I can bet that most of you are very aware of not, when it was to have dial-up of 9.6 kilobits and to lo download a picture of yourself was extremely painful. I'm sure you remember the sound. But children today, they have smartphones, they have cell phones, they have tablets, and I, I bet you see them always looking at these little handheld computers doing everything that can possibly be done. But it's, not, it's seamless to their world. It's not something that they bring and decide, oh, I'm going to use my cell phone for that. It's just part of their life. And we need to be able to use that part of their life to help them and empower them to take care of themselves. So part of this is new product development. And it's a best practice called user-centered design, where you, you look at the needs and wants of these children and use it throughout the process to come up with an idea, to develop a concept, to actually have a software developer write the prototype, and then even to deploy it in marketing. Every person on the team needs to know what the needs and wants of these children are. And for me as an engineer, well, where do I put that green button? And where, what functionality do I use? But rather, it's looking at the context and what they're saying. So for example, when a military child says, when I move away, I miss my friend, well, of course they can text each other, they can Skype each other, but do they continue to do that? How do you make that meaningful connection uh, when they miss their friend? Is it just texting? I don't think so. The other thing I hear quite a bit from military children is the advice I give to you is to keep in touch with your parent when they're deployed. Skype has revolutionized how military children can communicate with their parents when they're deployed. But it's just a conversation. I think sometimes it gets lost that 
they need to feel supported, both the parent and the child, through these conversations. And so there may be some ways that we can create meaningful dialogue that's not necessarily stilted or, or worried and everybody can be supported. I'm not sure that we've successfully figured that out. But with any community, there has to be a basis for um, kind of bring, bringing people together. And I like to tell you this story that I had early on in this project. We, we had a series of focus groups and one of the focus groups was of, a, of 10 uh, middle school age boys. And you can just imagine what that was like, you know, fidgeting and chaotic and one kid's going up and getting Cokes all, every other five minutes and eating pizza and so on. But I'll never remember, I'll never forget, I guess, there was a young man sitting right here and he started talking about his, how afraid he was when his parent was deployed and how it scared him that he may not come back, or if he did come back, that he would be injured. At that moment, when he started talking, all of these chaotic little boys focused and listened to that young man. It became very clear to me what my mission was. It is to connect these kids so they can be supportive of each other. They have a fundamental connection around fear which not many if civilian kids do not share. The, uh, also, so one of the things we did was create a message board on Military Kids Connect. And um, we asked kids, you know, would you like something like this, military kids? And they said yes, but one caveat, they wanted it to be just a military kid community. So let me tell you, it's, that's no small feat. Uh, First and foremost, when we develop it, you, we wanted to create a safe and secure network and messaging board for um, the kids. So they don't ha when they share their thoughts and feelings, they don't have to feel like they're going to be bullied or unsafe in some way or exposed to inappropriate language. We also wanted to protect them so if for some reason they revealed their name or where they were living or where their, their parent was going to be deployed, so that their um, their confidentiality, confidentiality or personality wouldn't be um, revealed. We also had to be aware of operation security. So we couldn't just say, my parent left yesterday to go to Iraq, if for some reason that might jeopardize the mission of that entire unit and the lives of that entire unit, we didn't want that to happen either. But the most challenging part about the community was creating a military-only community. We looked into logins and pulling data from here and there, and really there was no easy solution. So what we did was we decided to rely on self-selection. So when kids came into this moderated community, they could identify as military, and we would just track. We didn't know who was who. Um, and after a year or so, we realized that 95% of the children on the message board were identified as military. So we really did create a military community. So I want to read you an exchange of um, posts that came up probably within a week after the launch of the website. Uh, why is this happening? My dad is gone. I don't like it too. I wish he was here, but it's for the best. Hey, they are saving our country. I know how you feel. I hate it when they have to leave but you have to remember that they are out there saving people's lives. My dad is gone for a year. I really hate it, but he shouldn't leave again. Will you be my friend? That was so incredibly moving to me to see that we were able to create that conversation. But I'll tell you that not all the conversations are like that. Uh, Justin Bieber is discussed quite a bit, and Twilight, and the favorite TV show, and so on. But one type of conversation that we didn't see happening was talking about when a parent comes home. And comes home maybe with PTSD or maybe with a traumatic brain injury. There was no dialogue around that. So we realized we had planned to put content up around living with a parent in that circumstances but we really know it was more and more important because they didn't have the language. 
They didn't know what questions to ask. They didn't know what it was. So we created a module, a tough topics section on the website. And in addition, we created a commenting section in each of those modules. And we started seeing the conversation start. We started seeing questions being asked. So it wasn't just having a message board for free discussion. We needed to educate in order for them to have discussions. Another example of, we really wanted when the kids were on the website to know they were on a military kid website. And that's kind of hard. There's, <laughs> um, you have to attend to all the different services and the different types of uniforms and all that. But one thing we did is we created an avatar. And just by happenstance, we actually included a camo shirt and a camo hat. And what we realized after we noticed on the message board, there's a lot of avatars with that um, uniform on or outfit. Uh, but anyway, they were pink, they were purple, they were blue, but they're still camo. So these kids were really identifying as a military child and they actually made it safer for maybe other military child to see, I know I'm on a military child community. The other thing that we've learned over the years is marketing to military children. And we found that ads that have pictures of parents with uniform or a child with an insignia like the US Army or even using military language like PCS, that in fact those ads perform better than those that did not have that. So we were also directing kids to our website through their connection to military. And finally, I want to talk about one really interesting um, feature that was on the website. So we tested our landing pages and things with kids and very elaborate. There's the landing page, you know, videos, games, uh, stress management tools and so on. We were so proud. But at the top, there was a time and weather. And kids could select the time and weather of their deployed parent. And we'd show this, and they'd say, oh, we really like the time and weather. And um, so what we realized was they said, well, it just tells me what's going on with my dad or my mom. They could really visually see what their parents' life was like at that particular moment. Their weather, whether they were sleeping, so maybe they couldn't Skype, and it made sense to them. So um, it's a simple feature. It's not about talking back and forth. It is about connecting them with their parent in a way that you would never imagine. So I take my engineering and psychology perspective. And I still need to keep listening, observing, because things are changing in the military every day, practically. You know, with the drawdown, with moving from military to civilian life, with mothers going into combat, with different types of warfare where a parent leaves home in the morning, is a drone operator during the day on a combat mission, and goes back home at the end of the day. If deploying to countries where infectious disease becomes an issue and a child living with a parent with infectious disease, all of these are changes that we need to be thinking about. So I have a call to action for you. So I have my two perspectives, and I help military children by using technology. But I know that you have your two perspectives, and I know you can think of innovative ways and creative ways to help military children. So I would challenge you to do that, and to do it to help our children uh, live productive lives and fulfilling lives. They, those children are oh so precious military children, and we need to take care of them. Thank you.